Hello there. Just a little video today which might interest some people talking about EMI or electromagnetic interference. Something that's mentioned a lot these days with electronic uh, circuit design in relation to CE testing or conformity European um, basically all sort of consumer electronics products have to pass um, EMI tests so we won't go into those too much but some of the tests centre around emissions coming from the circuit itself and also immunity from um, sort of emissions in the environment that might affect um, the uh, hardware under test. I'm using this old machine here, it's a Hewlett Packard HP 142, 140T Spectrum Analyzer. It was built in about 1968 to 1970, cost about $40,000 at the time. It's an analog spectrum an analyzer. Don't see many of those, not many of them made um, because they went digital um, fairly quickly after these were produced. But these were the first viable commercially available um, machines at the time. Very good machines, still usable today, totally analog no did nothing digital aha as you can see we've got um, some you know sort of a lot of digital equipment in the display section because unfortunately this machine its cathode ratio got smashed in shipping it imploded smash couldn't use it still wanted to use the machine so brought it back to life put a mini ITX motherboard inside just squeezed it in it's actually at an angle inside I've got an, um, a 7 inch LCD touchscreen, um, it's running Windows, I've got some scope software on there, it's um, the IS sections interface to this with a little interface that I put together, it's got a speaker inside it and a little amplifier so I can actually hear stuff while I'm probing circuits, I can listen to radio transmissions, it's a useful feature, um, more spectrum analysers should have um, you know a speaker inside and so you can hear what's going on anyway let's connect up this circuit and let's uh, have a look at it this circuit can't remember what it was I was building I just put it to one side but it's got a crystal on it 48 megahertz programmable microcontroller good things for us pro to probe because these crystals are nasty little things for emitting EMI electromagnetic emissions or radiation so let's have a probe using a bigger probe here more sensitive just to illustrate in this little video but you can use smaller ones around this size and smaller to probe individual components and it gives you a better idea of which components are releasing emissions into the atmosphere so at the moment we hear nothing apart from my voice going on so I'll shut up a minute and then probe around the circuit That's a crystal, microcontroller, display, even a bit coming out of the uh, regulator there and that's because the, um, the harmonics and the emissions, uh, the harmonics from the crystal are going into all through the circuit even into the power supply circuitry because that is connected to the crystal and it's all radiating mainly from the crystal into the atmosphere. So what do we do about this? In, uh, if we've got a circuit like this, it's radiated, it's going to fail the emissions test, what do we do? Simple, we put it inside a metal case. Because it's as simple as this. A one mil sheet of steel. Totally stops the emissions dead in their tracks. So enclose it in a steel case or an aluminium case you're not going to have any problems just to illustrate this how even small openings in a case can allow electromagnetic emissions to escape let's have a look at the display here when I mounted this on the opening where the cathode ray tube was it's mounted on a piece of acrylic plastics and acrylics they don't really sort of they don't really create any resistance to these um, emissions whatsoever 
so what you need is a metallic object to a metallic material to block these things out so there's a small gap here behind the acrylic and there's a bigger gap in the middle here where the cables are going through into the machine so let's have a probe yeah we're picking it up on the screen no not so much because it's it's backed by steel here picking up a bit let's go to the gap yeah that's where it's leaking out of we can see just by probing our gap we can see we've got leakage there if we probe the rest of the machine no nothing a few little bits here and there coming out of these um, from these switches but not much if we probe the side of the machine it's uh, made out of aluminium and it's got um, it's perforated to allow airflow into the machine for cooling if we probe there nothing not a whisker not a sausage coming out there and it's because it's acting like a Faraday cage although it's perforated it's metallic it's grounded no RF frequencies can pass through there so yep these loop probes they're useful probing your equipment when you put it together if you're thinking about getting a product through the EMI testing you need to know whether you've got stuff leaking out of it because it will save you a lot of money having to have your tests redone in a lab which can cost you thousands of quid so that's why people need to invest in one of these and that's why there always seems to be a market on them um, in eBay and the rest of it it's because people are buying them to do what they call pre-compliance testing testing equipment to know whether it's going to stand um, any chance of um, passing the tests in a lab hope that's been of some use to you it's an interesting subject this um, emissions radio frequencies interesting stuff I never really focused on it this, that much before but I'm getting into it and I'm going to be doing some more videos so see you soon